Welcome back and of course your world begins right now and today our conversation like I said will be on PCOS and of course the impact that it has on infertility. So before I tell you what PCOS is all about and of course who's at risk and how does it impact a person's life and especially as far as fertility is concerned, well let's take a look at COVID-19 numbers and like I said we're still dealing with this pandemic. It has not left yet. We're not out of the woods so as per usual let's begin with the global figures where up until now as you can see 540 42,496,047. This is the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases across the globe. And then 517,554,081 total number of recoveries. And then 6,336,572. This is the total number of persons who've lost their lives to COVID-19. And of course, what you can see, the U.S. again still leading with the number of, uh, um, you know, infections. That is new infections and infections in general at 87 million uh, 759,108 and of course the list continues all the way down but let's come back to the country now and according to the health ministry which again we get the statistics every single day 327,892 total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases 319,903 total number of recoveries but unfortunately we've lost 5,651 one people again to COVID-19 and of course like we always say again we're not out of the woods yet the health ministry again just released statistics yesterday and of course keeps releasing uh, you know the same every single day we're dealing with the sixth wave of COVID-19 so again it's up to us to make sure that we keep ourselves and those ones around us safe so that we halt the spread of COVID-19. So that is what the figures look like this morning, but of course we expect to see, uh, you know, numbers, new numbers released by the health ministry today. But let's switch focus and of course on the topic of conversation today, and that is on polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS is one of the most uh, common causes of female infertility. And of course this lifelong health condition continues far beyond the childbearing years and can contribute to long-term health problems like diabetes and health uh, and heart disease. Well, Dr. Kiriaki Omano, who is the current president of Kenya Obstetrical, hey, Obstetrical and Gynecological Society. Uh, and of course, Lydia, who is here as well. Uh, Lydia Ndiho, who's living with PCOS, are here to just give us, um, you know, a better insight as far as PCOS, uh, you know, and of course, what it's all about and what you need to know as far as PCOS um, is concerned. But before you meet them, let's just answer the question. What exactly is a PCOS? Okay, so uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is a common condition that affects how a woman's ovaries work. All right. And of course, with PCOS, the ovaries produce an abnormal amount of androgens, male sex hormones that are usually present in women in small amounts. But there are three main features as far as PCOS is concerned and one of them is actually irregular periods and of course with irregular periods the ovaries do not regularly uh, release eggs and that is ovulation all right and then the second feature is the excess androgen which again like we said is the high levels of me uh, high levels of male hormones in the body which may cause physical signs such as excess facial or body hair and of course the third feature is polycystic ovaries which again ovaries become enlarged and contain many fluid filled sacs again or follic follicles if you want that surround the eggs so again what does it look like in terms of the symptoms of pcos well again like we said irregular periods or no periods at all difficulty getting pregnant as a result of irregular ovulation or failure to ovulate and then excessive hair growth that is hirsutism usually on the face chest or back like we said earlier on weight gain thinning hair or hair loss from the head and as well as oily skin all right and of course to get to understand more on the same again like i said we have dr kiriki omanua who is here with us as well and dr again looking at um you know all the symptoms they mimic symptoms for many other diseases right so does it make it easy 
to diagnose and especially with like what irregular periods which so many women will complain about you know just earlier this morning we were having that conversation yes. so does it make it difficult then to to diagnose PCOS uh, first of all thank you very much okay. for inviting me to the studio mm. uh, this morning mm. and um, thank you again MTV because um, June is um, is a month of uh, yeah. infertility okay. awareness yes. so we are here just to let the public know what is happening and what is infertility mm -hmm. what are some of the uh, reasons of uh, uh, for of some of the causes for infertility mm -hmm. and then apart from that we're here to also offer them you know support to mm -hmm. offer them help mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that whatever they are going through um, there are you know ways uh, that mm -hmm. that they can be managed mm -hmm. and that they can be helped they mm -hmm. can be treated mm -hmm. and things can be well and of course the objective is for them to have a baby that you know yes. that little yes. person in the home mm. who actually changes the dynamics yes. completely yes. and uh, and I also want to invite the viewers also mm. to watch this because this is important to them yeah. you've raised a very important uh, topic mm. polycystic ovarian syndrome um, and as you said as you mentioned some of them some of the symptoms you know you have irregular periods you may have acne you may have you know uh, hirsutism mm. you know weight gain and so on and so forth yeah. there are some others which we have you have we have not mentioned for example you may have low libido as well mm. you may have um, you know sometimes bloating um, you may have issues with um, uh, with sugars in the system and so on and so forth mm. so as the name suggests this is a syndrome mm -hmm. and in a syndrome not all patients will have the same the symptoms. symptoms. Yeah. There are some patients who will have these symptoms, others may not have them. Mm -hmm. Others may have two, others may have three, others may not have all these others. So you may have a small, you will have a small group of patients who will have the extreme s symptoms. Right. They will have the irregular periods, they will have the acne, they will have the, uh, the low libido, mm -hmm. uh, bloatedness, uh, etc. Et et mm -hmm. And on the other um, extreme, you'll have patients who have absolutely most none of these none, none of these symptoms, symptoms at all they will be okay. slim uh, they have regular periods and they get pregnant mm -hmm. and no problems so their polycystic ovarian syndrome mm -hmm. will be an incident of finding when uh, they come to see us we do all these other things and when we do a scan we find a lot these ovaries as you mentioned the yeah. ovaries have very many follicles mm -hmm. but uh, when you ask the patients have you ever had any issues never had any they issues at all and on this other extreme end, you have these ones who have all these symptoms. Mm -hmm. But most of the patients will have one or two of these symptoms, mm -hmm. and they'll be somewhere in between. Yeah. Very difficult sometimes to uh, diagnose, yeah. simply because some of these symptoms can also be in other in other uh, in other uh, diseases as well. Mm -hmm. For example, we talk about irregular periods. Um, most of the ladies, when they start having periods, the periods will be irregular. Mm -hmm. So you find period will come after, you know, after 32, 35, mm -hmm. uh, and then maybe after 16 days. Mm -hmm. But then usually after two, three years, um, after the beginning of the periods, they will settle Before, down uh, and yeah. they become regular. Mm -hmm. But something that is peculiar about uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is that um, these irregular periods will be there all the time. Uh, okay. So you find that um, instead of um, having a cycle which is 28, maybe 30 days, maybe 32 days, mm -hmm. you find it skips 60 days, 150 days, mm. uh, sometimes even half a year. Mm -hmm. I have I had a patient who had a period every two years. Oh wow! For some would say, oh that is fantastic, uh, but then uh, no, for others you say, well <laughs> something is definitely is definitely, is definitely wrong. Yeah. Now the other issues about about weight gain, for example, um, uh, there could be also issues with the thyroid, for example, the thyroid mm -hmm. gland, which produces thyroid stimulating hormone. Very very important. Mm -hmm. I call it the manager of other of other hormones okay. um, in the body. Sometimes, if there is an issue with the thyroid gland, women will have similar symptoms. Mm -hmm. You'll have weight gain, may have hair loss, mm -hmm. you may have you know mood swings, and so on and so forth. Okay. So it is important that um, if these symptoms are there please come and let us, as the Bible says, mm -hmm. come let us reason together. Yes. Let us try and find out Understand what, what, what the happening. problem is. Yeah. But the thing that drives women to come um, and see us, especially to see me, mm -hmm. is because of infertility. Oh, yes. They have irregular periods. They have tried to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. It has not happened. Mm -hmm. What is happening? So when they come, mm -hmm. um, listen to them. We take a history, and then we do the test, and we find, you know what? Mm -hmm. You have polycystic ovarian syndrome. Yeah. And you have... 
actually man the manifest most of the time 50 percent of the diagnosis is just by listening to the patient mm -hmm. you will have a very yeah, good idea say, i think this 50 percent is polycystic ovarian syndrome mm -hmm. or this is the problem mm -hmm. and you just need to do an extra test okay. to actually confirm Whether your, 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 your suspect, your suspicion. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and Lydia, let's talk to you again. Um, so for you, of course, you got married, right? Um, and of course, preparing for your wedding, you said, was a bit stressful. Uh, so for you, so after after the wedding, you wanted to, 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 to just get a child, start your own family. Uh, but then that did not happen for quite a while, mm -hmm. right? Um, Take us back. Do you have like any symptoms? Because Dr. Tari has extensively, um, you know, uh, taken us through some of the symptoms. Did you have any? Um, I think for me, the irregular periods. Yeah. But, you know, I think we are those, Kenyans are those people, yeah. truthfully. <laughs> we're like, ah, these things will sort themselves out. Yeah. And because for me, my regular periods were not very regular. Okay. It was 35, 40 days. Okay. So I'll have a period. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to be very heavy and mm -hmm. come on day 35 to 40. Mm. So it's not like you've missed ever a whole since? month. Like ever since? Ever since. Oh, okay. Ever since. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like you miss a whole month. Mm -hmm. uh, you you not look at your calendar and go like, I missed yeah, a whole month. month. Uh -uh. Of, no. Yeah. The period will appear. It's just not mm -hmm. in the normal way the period appears. Okay. So you'll never think about it. You'll be like, see, I had a period. And yeah, every time so it came. It it's came. that it took it, long. It, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it didn't come on the first, yeah. but it came on the fifth. Right. You know, so it's okay. Yeah. Yes. I had a period within the month. Okay. That, that for me was regular. It was okay. Mm -hmm. It's when you now start getting, you're like, now I want a baby. Yeah. And it's not happening. It's when you're yeah. like, hmm something is not working the way yeah. it's meant to work yeah and then i didn't have any of these other like the erotism yeah, yeah the what i had was the weight gain but i assumed you know when you get married you had weight. oh yeah it's called the love is hey. love what love weight love yes. with something yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Like, ah, you're because, settled you know settled you know you things are working right, right? right? <laughs> you're expected to gain weight in fact everyone was like ah this marriage has, yeah, it's, it's working for you. It's working. I did wait. Okay. So now it's when it did happen for, at least for me, within six months, mm. I was like, let's uh, go get checked. Yeah. Something is off. Okay. Um, so I went to get checked. And so the doctor sends me for all this hormonal profiling mm -hmm. and all these other things. Yeah. But then for the scan, the scan was very clear mm -hmm. because I usually call them the little pearls around your ovaries. Yeah. Tiny little pearls. It's like yeah. a, um, a pearl necklace yes, just necklace, around yes. your ovaries. And mm -hmm. then they're tiny little, mm. they go round, literally yeah. like tiny little balls around your ovaries. And you're like, okay, that's, n I mean, you, you mm. now know what, yeah, what, what exactly is, it is, is, is happening. Yeah. Um, and then you, for me, I, I went home and, you know, now read what, what is what this? What all about. Because yeah. truthfully, the, the, the way the doctor told it to me, mm. it was a very simple issue. Yeah. That could be sorted out like this. Mm. Okay. Winnie, in in fact, the guy looked at me like, in a year you'll be pregnant. You know, okay. the, at most. Yeah. It's something we solve like this. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was not <laughs> something we <laughs> <not> solve <laughs> like this. It's it did not happen. Whole, whole lifestyle change. Yeah. Because one, now you realize you're prone to diabetes type 2, okay. you're prone to all these other things. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you're still trying to get pregnant. Yeah. You have mood swings. Mm -hmm. it's, you're it's just everywhere. Yeah. And then the fertility drugs. Yeah. So they give you a whole bunch of fertility drugs. Mm -hmm. They're even making things much worse than you were. You know, yeah. before you had mood swings. Like, but now... Appear, you know the PMS in that oh, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yes. always complaining ah, about yeah, yeah. now in PCOS bad, is yes. like double that yeah. because you're in a bad mood. Yeah. Now add the fertility drugs. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. a really bad mood. Your hormones are all, all over, over the place. You cry anytime. Yeah. You laugh anytime. As in, <laughs> you're just yeah a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a mess. <laughs> and 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 Dr. Lydia yes. brings up. Uh, a very important point. Yes. Uh, and of course, number one is that aspect of irregular periods where we're just like, I see it came, see, yes. you know, okay, this month where it didn't come, but it will come, you yeah. know, and, and, and all those things. And then number two, an aspect of um, infertility. That's true. Or at this point, let's just say some fertility yeah. first, yeah. and then we'll get into the infertility part where, of course, the, the uh, we know the person who was saying, <coughs> he was like, yeah, you, you in, in, in one year, you'll be okay, you know. Um, and then, of course, that aspect of then diagnosis, uh, you know, true. comes comes into, into play. 
way. And and again, these are the things that we might just be like, eh, you know, hormones all over the place. We don't understand what is going on. And I'm pretty sure this is something that so many women deal with, but then we just don't know Absolutely. that this is what is happening as far as PCOS um, is concerned. Yeah. So for the hormones, can we just get to understand how exactly then these hormones, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of like get interrupted, affected okay. as far as PCOS is concerned? Now, normally what happens in a cycle, mm -hmm. um, let's start from the day, first day of the cycle. Yeah. When a woman has a period, it means one cycle has ended and he's starting another one. Mm -hmm. Why do women have a cycle? Mm -hmm. It is because, why do they have a period? It's because there is, um, in the womb, there's a lining of the, of the, of the, of the, of the womb called the endometrium. Mm -hmm. um, God has created us in a, in a fantastic way. Mm -hmm. uh, in that, um, when we start that, when women start that period, um, in the ovaries, there is communication from a part of the brain called the, the pituitary gland. Okay. It sends messages to the ovaries and tells ovaries now we are starting a new cycle. Okay. So start producing, start getting ready to produce an egg. Mm. So there is what we call recruitment. Very many eggs are recruited mm. because generally we have millions of eggs which are sleeping, mm -hmm. lying dormant, waiting to be, mm -hmm. um, uh, to be, to be woken up, as okay. it were. Mm -hmm. So these hormones tell the ovaries, guys start recruiting those, uh, those eggs, mm -hmm. about 500 eggs or whatever are recruited. Mm -hmm. But uh, on the way, we will only get about four of them which actually um, uh, will grow. Mm -hmm. The other ones will sort of get lost on the way. Okay. So now out of those four eggs or so, um, fo follicles, mm -hmm. let me not use eggs because you don't have eggs already, mm -hmm. follicles, eh? mm -hmm. it's only one of them which will actually grow and become what is called a dominant follicle. Right. And the dominant follicle will have an egg in it. Mm -hmm. Now as all this is happening, that uh, those, um, those follicles are releasing another hormone mm -hmm. called estrogen. Mm -hmm. Very important. That estrogen now works on the lining of the womb and prepares it um, for eventual, you know, implantation of a baby. Okay. So around f between day 9 and day 12, day 13, okay. ovulation occurs okay. in a normal cycle. Okay. So when ovulation occurs, if everything is well, because here Lydia was talking about trying to have a baby, yeah. if everything is well, assuming that the tubes are okay, because remember, um, in order for a woman to get pregnant, her tubes have to be okay because mm -hmm. sperm from the partner, from the husband, mm -hmm. have to travel through the tube until they get to a particular place mm -hmm. in the tube where they will meet with the egg. Okay. And then one of, the, one of the sperms will actually drill a tiny hole in the egg. Mm -hmm. By the way, remember these are microscopic things. Yeah. Eh? You can't even see, you them. Can't see them. And it yeah. is so amazing that out of such microscopic things, mm -hmm. we are here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That we can never it's, understand. It's out of this world. Doesn't matter how much you now, try. Now, once yeah. that has happened, fertilization has occurred, mm -hmm. then the, the, the egg which has been fertilized, mm -hmm. what we call an embryo, mm -hmm. starts going back. It takes about five days mm -hmm. to travel from where that point of the That's tube where it was fertilized yeah. until it gets to them, to the, to the womb, mm -hmm. where it again drills a tiny hole mm -hmm. and gets attached and starts growing. Okay. Now, that is when pregnancy occurs. Okay. If that process does not occur, mm -hmm. then uh, that egg obviously gets lost, mm -hmm. quote unquote, mm -hmm. and that lining which had been developed waiting for implantation mm -hmm. will now come out Shed. as a as yeah. a as a flow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, what happens in polycystic ovarian syndrome? Okay. In polycystic ovarian syndrome, remember all this interaction of these hormones, mm -hmm. and you mentioned something which is very important. You mentioned about androgens. Mm -hmm. With the excess of androgens, you remember those 500 or so eggs, um, follicles which were recruited, mm -hmm. there are too many of them yeah. and none of them actually does what? Will be able to come out and become a dominant ah, follicle. Right. So they become quote-unquote arrested. Mm -hmm. So that is why when you do a scan mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on the scan, mm -hmm. we actually see these tiny follicles yeah. which look like um, pearls Pearl, yeah. and they are actually arranged concentrically around mm -hmm. them around mm -hmm. the uh, around the ovary. the ovary i mean okay. you just need to see it once and yeah. you'll always and remember you'll so that is where is. the problem is in yeah. that once we have a little bit more androgens mm -hmm. Ladies have androgens, but when it's that level is a little more. bit higher than yeah. what is supposed to be, mm -hmm. so you have that 
uh, fighting and the rest of the follicles mm -hmm. so they don't grow and because of that they also other interaction with other hormones as well mm -hmm. insulin because in the polycystic ovarian syndrome mm -hmm. you have what you call insulin resistance okay. now insulin is a very important hormone mm -hmm. um, I'm sure we've heard about diabetes and mm -hmm. so on and I think you mentioned it yeah. as well mm -hmm. now insulin makes um, our bodies make use of glucose that we take. So once we eat in our sumptuous chapati mm -hmm. or rice or ugali, okay. now the body has to convert that into glucose. Okay. Now in polycystic ovarian syndrome, ma most of that sugar is not taken into the muscle so that it can be used as energy mm -hmm. into the cells. Okay. So there is a lot of sugar in the system as it were. Mm -hmm. And now that sugar is converted into something else. Yeah. It's converted into fat. Mm -hmm. So that is where we have, you know, weight, weight gain. gain. Yeah. And sometimes this weight gain is actually, me, I eat very little. Mm -hmm. but, still, but still, because of that insulin resistance, mm -hmm. it leads to that. Now, insulin resistance plus the androgens, you know, it becomes uh, a vicious, a vicious yeah, cycle. cycle. And then okay. it has a knock-on effect later okay. on. Um, with a little elevated um, androgens, the, you talked about hirsutism, mm. where in women you have excessive hair mm. on the chin, on the, on the chest, you know, um, and so on. Yeah. What happens is that for us men it is normal mm. to have that kind of hair. Yeah. But for women, the pores where the hair grows through becomes extra sensitive mm. to that little more androgens which is in the system. Yeah, yeah. So you find the hair which is not supposed to grow on the chin, because of that extra growing. sensitivity, it grows. It starts growing. Ah, okay. Mm. All right. It's um, um, it's intricate. It really but, is. But it really is. We, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's take a break. Um, get to absorb <laughs> <laughs> the biochemistry, right? <laughs> and then, of course, when we come back, that would would, would understand, especially Lydia. Like you said, the doctor was like, "Yeah, you in one year you you'll be pregnant, right?" Yeah. And like you said, that did not that did not happen. Mm. Um. So what was the next option? Um. You know, for you, did you try to you know look for for the other options? And how are you doing right now? All right. Of course, all that will be coming up, and the guy, of course, would want to understand, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people would want to know, um, is the risk factors. What are some of these risk, risk factors as far as PCOS um, is concerned? So a lot of discussion coming up after the break as far as PCOS is concerned. You want to stay with us. The Kenya Academy of Sports cordially invites you to the second annual International Sports Conference to be held at the Safari Park Hotel from the 15th to the 17th of June 2022 under the theme Investing in Sports Talent Development for Sustainable Elite Performance. Visit www.kas.or.ke slash KAS Conference 2022. Oh. Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in just 15 minutes. Trust Panadol Baby and Infant to work on fever fast to bring back their cute smiles. Every day, over 15 million members are transforming Africa.
15 million members empowered to learn, to create, to grow, to harvest, to lead, to dream. Equity. Karibu member. count on dialer battery service from Chloride Exide. We deliver a brand new battery when you need it, where you need it. And install it free of charge with easy payment options. Dial a battery. Convenience delivered. Nairobi wanafikiri yanga na kiungo kani yani nimekuja Nairobi kufanya kazi ya security eh siku yangu ya kwanza nikaota mtosi wangu umetajirika nikamwambia mtoto yangu akanifuta kazi <laughs> common sense common sense to get watchman dial star 812 star 804 hash skiza na nation Hypertension is usually called silent killer. Why? Because many patients are unaware that they have the disease. I have no recollection of any symptoms uh, back in the 90s. The only reason I knew about hypertension uh, it was because of my medical, my regular medical checkups. Blood pressure is not a cured disease except if you go for a certain intervention or a certain treatment. So the medical treatment for high blood pressure, as you mentioned, it's for life. Na yaza ambia mtu yiko na pressure, hile kita natakana chunge sana, ni hile family ya nakana ayo. Kama anajua uyu ni mkari, ya ya rudi chini. Get peace of mind and protect the ones you love with the power of Dettol Bar Soap. It cleans and protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. So no matter what type of mum you are, trust Dettol. Right. Welcome back. Glad to so with us. The show is your world. And of course, our conversation today is on PCOS and of course its impact as far as infertility is concerned. Because like Dr. Ari said, first June is Infertility Awareness Month. So of course, it's important for us to address these issues that again has been approached, uh, you know, in a taboo manner, in harsh, harsh tones, or sometimes, um, especially for persons, not sometimes, all the time, persons who again struggle with uh, infertility are stigmatized a lot. And sometimes people don't even get to understand what their story is, okay? So we're trying as much as possible and just fight stigma um, as much as we can. So Lydia, we don't have too much time, but very quickly, I'm, you know, on to you. So the doctor was like, yeah, one year you'll, you'll, you'll have your own baby, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and all those things. So what are some of the treatments? Because um, like you said, you are subjected to what, seven cycles? Seven cycles uh, of just drugs. Of just drugs. Uh -huh. And then now we moved to IUI, okay. which is inject um, injectables. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different yeah, yeah. ball game. Mm -hmm. um, so injections, injections. After the third field IUI, mm -hmm. um, Doctor will explain what IUI is. Yes. Um, so the doctor says we now do IVF. Okay. But the, for me, mm -hmm. why I did not take the IVF option was yeah. the risks involved. Mm -hmm. um, however, mm -hmm. 
after all that, yeah. um, so it's been, it was what, seven years? Seven years, yes. Yeah, yeah. seven years, and mm -hmm. I was like, it's time to it's, wrap this up. It's okay. It's, <laughs> it's okay. okay. And, and I'm it's just okay. trying to imagine at, at this time, you know, the seven years, yes. um, of course, there's a lot of voices, yes. <laughs> you yes. know, a lot of people yes. would come to you uh, with opinions and, and solutions, you know, quote unquote, and, and I can imagine how much that was um, mm. for you to just take in and, and get to understand. Take us through those, those moments. Oh. And even, first of all, just accepting the fact that, listen, this is PCOS, um, you know, it will, it will um, you know, of course, affect my fertility. Yeah. So just dealing with that fact, first, um, first of all, first how was it for you? It's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. It's very hard because when you get married, you know, there is the expectation. Oh, yeah. Please, we're in an African society. <laughs> Babies need to come and come fast, you know. Um, uh, so there's that expectation. There's also your own feeling of, my gosh, the one thing I'm meant to do right yeah. is is Just give birth, have, yeah. is carry a baby and give birth. Yeah. I mean, that's the one thing we're meant to do right, mm -hmm. <coughs> and it's not happening. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of also internal bashing mm -hmm. of yourself, of shame, of mm -hmm. guilt. Yeah. Because you're like, did I do something? Mm -hmm. did... Then there's the voices, there's yeah. the mitishambas. Ah, the mm -hmm. hubs, you will hear about are many and yeah. varied. The outside, like, um, solutions outside the, like, I usually say the Christian circle. Mm -hmm. So there's all these other traditional s traditions you will hear. You're like, ah, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll hear all these things. Yeah. You'll hear the people telling you, go see this other doctor. He's now the mm -hmm. the uh, the king. Yes. He will sort all your problems cure. out. Mm. Yeah. Has your cure. Yeah. And truthfully, the doctor does not have that cure. Mm -hmm. You already know what's mm -hmm. wrong. You yeah. just you know you know what you're dealing with. Mm. Um. So you'll find us especially women jumping from one doctor to another to doctor another. to another doctor because yeah. the pressure is not on the man truthfully yes. the man is never at it mm -hmm. so why don't you have children yeah. no no it's always on it's the woman us women and yeah. people ask the most outrageous questions yeah you know uh hiya you're still eating food and getting fat wow you're still i mean there'll be nasty comments you will hear nasty yeah, things. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so, just being prepared, mm. f be prepared yeah. for the, the things that come at you. Yeah. Um, it makes you very, very introverted as well. True. Because you don't, truthfully, mm. if you're in a fertility cycle, you don't have time for people. Mm. Because, mm -hmm. first, it's very regimented. Mm -hmm. I usually say, if you're doing drugs, yeah. fertility drugs, especially injectables, they're very regimented. Yeah. You have a whole schedule you need to follow. Okay. I have no time. Between work and following the schedule, I mm -mm. don't have no, time. No time for, in between. Yes. Yes. yes, yes. And you see, at that time, again, it's... Number one, like you said, there's that internal conflict. Yes. You know, you're questioning, what is it with mm. me? What did I do wrong? All those questions that we usually ask ourselves. Why me? Mm. All those things. And then these other forces come, come, come and, and, and also sort of try to give you solutions, which is, not, which is not ideal. Again, people, can we just reserve our comments and, and just let <laughs> professionals do their jobs? Because, again, this contributes a lot to the stigma, mm. uh, you know, that is, that is really out there. Mm. Um, so after all, um, you know, all the cycles, um, you went back to the... And especially for that doctor who told you after one year you you, you will be you'll I, be okay. I, I respect him because yeah. after the one year yeah. he gave up yes. and wrote me a letter <laughs> and said no let mm -hmm. me refer you to someone else. someone else who's much more mm. um better place in, yes. in fertility in, in fertility medicine okay. because some of our gynas are just principal gynas yeah. mm. they haven't done like a lot yeah, more like in terms of as far as, 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 as infertility is concerned. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So they'll do the basic diagnosis. They'll tell you what is wrong. Mm. But now when it comes to now looking like get, getting you pregnant, that's mm. a whole different yeah. ball okay, game. So they'll refer you. Yeah. Unless someone is being mean and nasty, most of them will just say, you yeah, know, I have a lecturer. Yeah. In fact, that's how they start that conversation. You yeah. know, my lecturer. Mm -hmm. And then they write you a letter and they tell and you, go see him. Go see him. Okay. Or the, you'll hear him call and say, mm -hmm. I have this case. It's presenting like this. Can I refer the person to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. That I respect about him. Okay. Because after a year, 
He was like, listen, we tried. We it's, tried. It's not happening. It's not happening. Okay. Let me refer you. All yeah. right. Yeah. And, and Dr. Terry, again, yes. um, so then just understanding the worst of the risk factors so that we um, fight stigma as far as you did this, yeah. th that is why you are where you are today, mm. right? What are some of these risk factors that we're looking at as far as PCOS is concerned? Actually, as far as PCOS is concerned, mm. we don't exactly understand what, what the causes are. Okay. Because um, we see that it sometimes can run in families. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that it's hereditary? No. No. Because if um, it was supposed to be hereditary, mm -hmm. then we'd have to isolate a gene mm -hmm. which actually calls or which directs the ovaries to work the way they are they're, they're working. Mm -hmm. There is no such gene which has been isolated. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. But um, as I say, it can run in families. You may find that um, in families, uh, women are a bit hairy mm -hmm. than in others. Mm -hmm. um, they've had issues with uh, getting pregnant. They have irregular periods. So when you talk to your sister, mm -hmm. talk to your mom, or you talk to your aunties, mm -hmm. you find, no, that runs in our family, as okay. it were. Right. But um, a real scientific basis that is genetic, we don't have. Mm -hmm. These other ones are could be environmental, could mm -hmm. be, I'm saying could be, mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the way we eat, um, if we eat um, and uh, we don't do exercise, mm -hmm. and again, that um, the types of foods that we eat mm -hmm. can also contribute to, um, uh, to insulin insensitivity, mm -hmm. and then we can get into that cycle, cycle mm -hmm. again. Yeah. So these are some of the things that we think. Now, um, as you say it, people think uh, maybe it is you, there's something that you did, mm -hmm. you know, that, um, or you, are, you didn't do, that is why you are not having a baby, mm -hmm. or you're not having this. I think we need to take a step back from yes. this. We really yes. seriously need to take a step mm -hmm. back and um, start empathizing more mm -hmm. with, this, with these couples. Yeah. Because number one, there's a lot of pressure, mm -hmm. a lot of pressure from your immediate family. Mm -hmm. And the pressure will start actually from your partner mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. And the partner actually has pressure from um, from the mother, mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, you know, that sort of thing. No. So yeah. that pressure starts from the immediate family, mm -hmm. and then it comes from the, uh, from the distant family. Mm -hmm. And then society as well, you mm -hmm. know, chips in mm -hmm. and says, wait, wait. You know, very, very painful, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes yeah. we don't know what words can do uh, to these couples because you don't know their story. Absolutely. You don't know how they're struggling. Absolutely. Lydia here was struggling for seven years. Seven Does years. that mean you go out and say, you know what, I'm struggling for seven years. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get pregnant, so sympathize mm -hmm. with me or empathize with me. Mm -hmm. No. Sometimes even the social circles where we, where we mm -hmm. go to, we go to church, we go to birthdays, mm -hmm. we go to weddings, and so on. Mm -hmm. Even in church, uh, some of our leaders can be very, very insensitive. Absolutely. I had a friend of Absolutely. mine who came and told me that hey, somebody called her in the morning and said, Umeanza kutapika? Aujanza kutapika? I said, what? And then they would meet in church and they would poke uh, her tummy and said, Kwani, are you having, why are you not having a baby? Okay. What she did not understand, yeah. blatant, what she did not understand is that this lady, who she is asking whether Mianza Kutapika Amabado, she had actually gone through um, a miscarriage. Oh no. And of course, you don't have to go and tell everybody, everybody you know, yeah. I'm doing this and this is what is happening and so on. Mm -hmm. But you see, what we do, what we say is very, very hurtful. Absolutely. And again, this is because of the society, the societal norms that mm -hmm. we have. It is normative that uh, as a lady, mm -hmm. you must have a baby. Mm -hmm or you should have a baby. Mm. And if that one year has passed, and hakuna mtoto, shida niwewe. Mm. But what we forget is that about 40% of the reasons of infertility, actually shida ni zetu, it's the men. Is men. Mm. Mm. Is men. Mm. But because, number one, men, um, men don't show mm. the work that has been going on behind mm. doors. It is ladies who show oh it. God, yeah. So if the woman does not manifest the hard work that has been going on behind mm -hmm. doors, mm -hmm. then she is the problem. Yes. I had a, a, a case whereby um, this lady was married to the last one in the family, oh. the last young man in the family. Okay. So they lived in the same homestead with okay, the with okay. the with the with the, with the in-laws, mm -hmm. and obviously after a year nothing happened. Two years nothing happened. The mother-in-law was obnoxious. She would abuse this lady. She would throw names at her. She would, mm -hmm. kukapa, kula pesa etu, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, whatever. The lady was very, very uh, magnanimous, kept quiet, mm -hmm. never said anything, mm -hmm. very respectful. They went and had um, uh, tests done, mm -hmm. and she was fine. 
the problem with the, the man. The, the man. But now the dilemma is, what do I do? I have to protect this, mm, this exactly. my husband. Mm. Yeah. Um, let me take all this flick that yeah. I'm getting, but I have to protect him. Okay. So at the end okay. of the day, what happened is that they had actually to move from that homestead. Mm. They had built a house, you know, mm. in, the, in our societies. Mm. The last one is one who takes care of the parents. Yeah. So it was so bad, they moved away. They went to live in a town near the homestead mm. so that they can avoid all. Now, you see, when the mother-in-law comes and says, this woman is doing this, is not doing this, and so on, the other family members also join in the chorus. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. So okay. it was a no. very toxic, very, very, very toxic, toxic environment. Yeah. So yeah. they moved out. And you see, this lady came and told me, saying, no, Dr. Tari, what do I do? Okay. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, because if I tell the mother the problem is with your son, I mean, we are finished. That's and then obviously else. there is that psychological well-being of the husband as well. Mm -hmm. So again here, I applaud women. Mm -hmm. And I really do respect women because mm -hmm. you have magnanimous hearts. Yeah. You said, I will protect this man mm -hmm. by all means. It doesn't matter. These arrows that are being thrown at me by the mother um, and whatever, yeah. I will take so that I protect his Absolutely. integrity, which, yeah. was, which was fantastic. Yeah, but let's yeah. just not, let's, let's not be, <laughs> like, let's not, let's not, okay? Let's just try to get to understand people's stories yes. before... We open our mouth or go around poking people's tummies. Absolutely. That, don't do that. Okay, Dr. Terry, we have very limited um, time, less than 10 minutes to conclude the conversation. And I'm sure someone watching might be thinking, so then what is what is the what is the solution? Lydia, maybe you, you might want to take us through this very quickly based on, mm -hmm. on your story. So after, you know, uh, the cycle seven years later, you know what, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I accept this is what is happening. So what was the, what was the options for you? So the options for me was now either to move on and do IVF mm -hmm. or to adopt. Yeah. Uh, so for me, I went to the adoption mm -hmm. um, angle. Yeah. However, I'm one of the um, few yeah. that in P who have struggled to get pregnant in P with PCOS. A mm -hmm. lot of them do get pregnant. Yeah. I have a lot of my friends who have PCOS and, and get, get pregnant, pregnant yeah. and carry the pregnancies to and have beautiful babies. Mm -hmm. So my from my experience mm -hmm. i'd say go see a doctor okay. um don't keep quiet don't mm -hmm. struggle on your own mm -hmm. and as women truthfully trust your instincts mm -hmm. your instincts will tell you if something yeah. is not is right here yeah. we just ignore sometimes. we just ignore yeah. or we talk to our friends mm -hmm. and we have a common consensus with our friends like <laughs> You know, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. fine. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. But uh, from my experience, mm -hmm. um, even when you're younger, mm -hmm. because I think we have this thing of, I ah, see, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm in campus. Mm -hmm. We we are not looking at our cycles. We're yeah. not looking at um, all these things. Mm -hmm. For us, mm -hmm. it's life is easy. Yeah. Uh, it will get better. Yeah. Um, until I'm still young. Yeah. I'm still, still yeah. have time. I have still have time. I think some of these things, if we catch them early, yeah. and you manage them earlier yeah. than before you get married, before you're busy now looking for this child and you're running from doctor to doctor figuring yeah. out what's going on, know your cycle. Yeah. No, a cycle is 28 to mm -hmm. 32 days. Mm -hmm. I'm not there. Yeah. So something what is happening is off. Listen um, to your body, go Listen get to body. Yeah. go get checked okay because if, if with pcos if you catch it early for most people who caught who i have interacted with and they caught it much earlier like when they're in campus and stuff mm -hmm. for them they had no issues getting pregnant yeah. because they'd already managed the syndrome because it's a syndrome yeah, so you yeah, just yeah. manage just it just manage it yeah a lot of it is diet and exercise but mm -hmm. manage it mm -hmm. so that by the time you're coming to the place where now you want a child then when you go see Dr. Dr. is not starting yeah. from the basics. He already has a diagnosis. He knows what he's doing. So it's just, you know, okay. it's simpler. It's All simpler. Right. And, and Dr. is there then a level of severity or what, what, what happens? Because like Lydia says, for her, again, she, 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 she wasn't able to get pregnant. But for others, they get pregnant. So w what happens? Yeah. Now, mm. as we said right in the beginning, it's a syndrome. Yeah. And uh, some of these um, uh, symptoms will overlap. Okay. and will have an effect mm. on, the, on the outcome. Mm. Say, for example, uh, one is overweight. Mm -hmm. 
and has polycystic ovarian syndrome okay. and has irregular periods. Mm -hmm. So first of all, the irregular, irregular periods become a huge challenge because you don't know when to have that intercourse. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, remember the cycle that, cycle that you went through, mm -hmm. usually around day 9, day, 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 day 10, 11, 12, mm -hmm. that is when ovulation occurs. Yeah. So if you have a period which comes, a cycle which happens mm -hmm. after uh, 60 days, yeah. 150 days, so you actually becomes, don't know when you are day 9, day 10, when you are going to ovulate. Yeah. So that becomes a huge challenge. Okay. And as I said, there are others who actually have no symptoms at all, at all. and they get, they get pregnant, like you said, yeah. you know, some of them in campus, they got sorted out and they are happy, they have children and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think the key thing here mm -hmm. is for us to get that diagnosis right. Okay. And then uh, what do we do? Mm -hmm. What does uh, Lydia want? Mm -hmm. Lydia wants to have a baby. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different channel route that we are going to take. Okay. Lydia doesn't want to have a baby, mm -hmm. but we have uh, uh, we have diagnosed her to have polycystic ovarian syndrome. What do we do? Mm -hmm. Do you want to have irreg irregular periods? Mm -hmm. Completely different different um, method of treatment okay. and management. Right. Now, once we have these basic things sorted out, mm -hmm. then it is a lot easier to help um, our ladies. Okay. The options of treatments that um, that you that you talked about. Obviously, we always start with them very basic non-invasive. Mm. Um, they started you on medications, mm. you take tablets, sometimes you increase the dose, mm. and then we see whether there is a response. Mm. Sometimes, yes, you asked about severity. Mm. We see patients who have huge numbers of those mm. tiny follicles, okay. 30 on one, on, uh -huh. one, on, one ov on one ovary, yeah. and maybe another 30 on the other ovary. becomes a huge, huge challenge okay. because imagine this place where we are here, we have maybe about 300 people mm -hmm. standing here, and then somebody said there is a fire. What are we going to do? All of us are going to look for an exit. Mm -hmm. How many of us are going to get out of there? Almost none. Almost so it's something yeah. similar to that. When you have so many of them like that, then it becomes a challenge. Sometimes it be the medication becomes, uh, do not even uh, mm -hmm. the obvious don't respond to the medications. Mm -hmm. Then we move a notch higher. Mm -hmm. You talked about the injections, you know, and so on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you combine tablets with mm -hmm. injections. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are trying to stimulate the ovaries mm -hmm. through different, different biochemical pathways. Okay. If that doesn't work, mm -hmm. then the last resort mm -hmm. is to take the patient to theater. Right. Now we become invasive. Right. We take her to theater, mm -hmm. we can do what is called it used in the past, we used to do, uh, we used to cut a wedge on the on the ovaries. Eh? Means we basically increase the surface area, we reduce some of the some of the follicles, and allow more to you know to mature later on. Okay. But these days we don't do that. We do what is called uh, laparoscopic ovarian drilling, mm -hmm. where we make a tiny two, three tiny holes in the abdomen, and we go in with energy and drill some holes in the yeah, in the in, in the ovaries. The ovary, okay. This helps you know a lot lot more. Mm -hmm. Now usually again as you say this lifestyle what we are eating exercise and so on and so forth mm. weight loss is one of the one of the basic things oh, yeah. that we suggest especially when a patient is overweight mm. um, 10% reduction of 10% of uh, initial weight loss mm. uh, initial weight in a space of 3 to 6 months mm. actually when we when they do that you find that the periods come spontaneously mm. and when they come spontaneously it's a lot easier to manage to manage them yeah. but in the small percentage of the cases whereby this doesn't happen mm. then is when we go the whole hog as it were mm. take them to theater come back give them injection if it doesn't work then we take a step back and say look um, seven years it took you. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to take seven years. Yeah. We want to work quickly and decisively. Mm -hmm. So we want to help them because the ultimate objective is for them to have a baby. Mm -hmm. So this hasn't worked. This hasn't worked. Um, your partner is okay. We've checked him. He's okay. Mm -hmm. Your tubes are okay. You don't have other possible reasons for infertility. Mm -hmm. Then let us deal with it. Then we can talk about IVF. Now, okay. even with IVF, we, ha we have some challenges as well. Mm -hmm. Because remember, these ladies have a lot of, a lot of eggs. So when we stimulate them, mm. we have to, uh, number one, give them very low doses of stimulation medication. Why? Because again, these follicles, um, again, start growing very quickly and mm. there are very many of them. Oh, yeah. That can also lead to other challenges, yes. what we call ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Mm. But then we have a way around it. Okay. If we do see that uh, we have such a challenge, mm -hmm. we continue through with, um, uh, with, um, uh, with, the, with the treatment, mm. we get the eggs out, mm -hmm. We fertilize the eggs out, yeah. and we freeze the embryos. Okay. We let the woman uh, take a rest, take a break, 
uh, two months or so, mm -hmm. once the body has, you know, gone back to his, um, to his rest or physiological position, mm -hmm. then now we start preparing her for what we call frozen embryo transfer. Mm -hmm. We are in better control. Okay. What risks do we, uh, uh, do we take in if you're going to seconds. do a transfer? Yes. She may go into, into ICU because of fluid accumulation mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. And it actually may lead, it may, may, may lead to disastrous circumstances. Okay. So you don't want to go into that. All so right. it's a quite so challenging it's, it's, yeah it's but we are like able a balancing, to manage a balancing yes, act that, that you have to do mm. okay uh, can i give you each like 10 seconds <laughs> to just give you positions <laughs> because this is such a wide uh, video topic that that, that you know to, to go through in in one hour so yes. uh, 10 10 seconds lydia then i'll come to um, the next time. pcs is manageable yeah. um it is a it is an it is okay to have it yeah See a doctor, mm -hmm. get tested, mm -hmm. and then figure out what next. Yeah. Um, and there are many options. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that you have options. to do. Reduce yeah. stigma. That's, that's basically yes. what we're saying. Okay. Yes. <laughs> like time for you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Number two, thank you, Lydia, for yes. you know sharing your story because mm -hmm. I'm I'm sure you are an encouragement to other Absolutely. a lot of women Absolutely. out there. Yeah. And uh, men, please don't leave your wives or don't go and mm -hmm. get number two and number three yeah. because your wife is not getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Even if there are issues with infertility, we are here. God has given us the skill and the ability and we can actually help you right here. You don't have to go you know, outside the country to other countries. Mm -hmm. We are here and we have the skills and the ability to do that. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, so go get, get, go get help is, is basically what we're saying. Um, you know, health is there, hope is there, and, and we're saying, please, let's let's not stigmatize people, um, you know. Um, but it doesn't matter what it is that they're going through. Let's just, like the client said earlier on, practice empathy, and of course that will go a long way. The client, thank you very much for coming by today, Lydia. Thank you very much for sharing your story as thank well. You. And thank you for staying with us until the end of the show. I hope that you've learned and grasped so much from today's conversation. And of course, the conversation continues online. So get uh, to interact with us on our social media platforms. Whatever questions that you have, we'll forward them to Dr. Tari. Uh, and of course, he'll be able to answer all of them. My name is Winnie Lubembe on behalf of an amazing team who put together and made sure that the show is a success. We say thank you and God bless. And of course, enjoy uh, you know, the rest of your day and the rest of your viewing. Goodbye for now. <laughs>